Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel, and Lesson 39 is the second part of the Keith Hart article on Lessons from Argentina. Okay. Right there, that is the Ithaca Hours newsletter, and at the top, it's got pictures of their one-hour bill. That's their social currency. So, I used to have some bolder Colorado one-hour bills, but it's a bill that says worth one hour of work worth ten dollars in the states 12 in canada 60 green mark francs in france 20 green marks in germany six green pounds in britain they all set their standard to the time standard of labor how many national units to an hour but internationally we trade hours it's easier so especially when the banks take two percent switching between national currencies right so community currencies have come a long way in the last two decades since Michael Linton invented Let's in British Columbia. And then I sent them 20 grand to do the first software to unleash on the internet. The idea of Let's is that any network can constitute itself as a community of exchange by nominating a currency and recording all transactions through a central register. Well, it's like coming up with your own poker chips, running your own game. Actually, it never had to use a central register, and the development of personal Let's account notebooks by the France Jeu movement, Jardin d'Echange Universel, is the best proof that no central register is ever needed for two people to transact a trade. Like at my website, my UniLets account, it simply has things I offer, things I want, things I've earned, time I've put in, and things I owe, time I've received, mainly accommodations in Europe for that summer. So, Keith Hart, the totality of transactions at any time sums to zero. The money is issued by all members whether, whenever any of them has a negative balance. They make a promise to honor such commitments in the future. The loss of individual members to the circuit does not impede the ability of the others to trade, as it does when the supply from a single issuer of money dries up. Now, Keith's got this leakage problem right. Many old Letzers had suffered the problems of leakage of currency from a group until it came back later, when all they had to do was print more for local use while some of their IOUs were out of town. Leakage! Ah, we don't have enough. Keith Hart, the currency itself is simply a virtual measure. It has no commodity value, therefore no price, interest, no reason to become scarce nor to be hoarded. Poker chips. Most let systems to date are unique, self-sufficient organizations, providing a minor economic alternative without much prospect of replacing the role of conventional money and markets in our lives. Until our banking system breaks down, in which case people have no choice but to come and use the alternate money when there's no federal money around. So, Unilex certainly has a much prospect of replacing the role of conventional money and markets in our lives around the whole world at the same time. So, Hart, but recent developments, especially in the use of information technologies, have made community currencies a faster, cheaper, and more effective means of carrying out normal commerce. Smart cards registering transactions in up to 15 currencies linked to businesses and nonprofit organizations as well to individuals allow these circuits to become integrated into the market economy. National domain name systems and multiple currency clearing platforms open the way for the banks to handle let's business, although none has yet done so. All they got to do, the banks, is offer to host not only my Canadian account and my American account, but my time account. You same software, just different medium. You have to wonder why they haven't done it, eh? So community currencies also offer one solution to the problem of electronic micropayments, a possibility being explored with the European Commission at this time. Don't forget the European Parliament offered grants to set up letters in Europe in the late 90s, so it's logical they'd be leading the way. In Japan, he says, large corporations are participating with grassroots democratic organizations in let's experiments. And of course, we don't hear anything about them, but it's not the news that the Bloomberg financial reporters are going to tell us about, right? How nations are getting unhooked from their debts. That's not making economy investors very happy. So, I can't believe that high-tech Japan won't be leading the way, too.
So, a collaborative project of software engineering and social innovation is maturing to the point where talk of a revolution in money is not just the self-deluding hype of enthusiasts. Gee, you mean 25 years ago, 30 years ago, when I started my abolish interest rate project, it was just self-deluding hype, but now it's not anymore? They may have called it self-deluding hype when I started my personal revolution in money 25 years ago, but he says not anymore. So the Maastricht Treaty means that the economic destiny of 300 million Europeans will be tied to the fortunes of a single currency whose management cannot possibly meet their varied needs and interests. The euro is in principle a throwback to the Bretton Woods era of fixed parity exchange rates, at least for the participating countries, and it does not take much imagination to figure out that the deflationary consequences for some parts of the European economy might be occasionally unpleasant. The constituent governments of Euroland will come under pressure from their own people for more flexible instruments of economic management. Well, they haven't, have they? <laughs> the Euro cannot do the job all by itself. No, it can't. National monopolies of money have, in any case, only been around since the 1850s. Whoa, 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 throughout all of history. Kings have been selling the right to create the money to local loan sharks to use gold. Now would be a good time to reorganize the need for a variety of monetary instruments for as many, in fact, as our communities. Well, you don't need a whole bunch of different community currencies if your Federal Reserve, your National Treasury, or your Bank of Canada would just open a cage, let people log on like PayPal, and run it interest free. All they got to do is install the Let's software on the Fed database or the Bank of Canada database or the Bank of England database and it's over. It's fixed. So it's not all this hard. So, yes. So, uh, Britain's relationship to the Euro no, will be more of than just a passing interest. At present, Blair and Brown have contrived to replicate the old Tory policy of the hard écu, whereby the national currency persists in competition with the centrally managed European currency, with each finding its own level. I endorse the European drive towards political unity, and I share the widespread dismay over Britain's re apparent reluctance to join in. But this does not prevent me from holding out for a pluralistic monetary regime after, rather than a unitary one. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's pluralistic or unitary as long as it's interest-free and stable. If either one with interest is unstable. So it may well be that by suppressing their national currencies, some countries will encourage the formation of parallel exchange circuits. That's good. Employing virtual Deutschmarks or francs as community currencies. Why not? When it, wherever a shortage of federal cash manifests itself, there will be less sources to provide liquidity for all who want to take some out. So he says, radical change today hinges on the digital revolution, but the forms of money are only superficially technical. Notes, coins, checks, plastic digits. The most important forms are social, and after several thousand years of only two kinds, commodity and state money in various combinations, it takes some effort to embrace another, people's money. What, time money is so hard to embrace? Based on people's time, not just their gold and their stuff. Digitalization does point to the growing separation between society and landed power. So I have suggested that embracing community currencies would enable us to take fuller advantage of that potential. Or reprogramming the central database to operate on LETS. Whether we have to do it ourselves or they do it for us, as long as they reprogram it using interest-free 1 over S software, I'll be happy. I don't care who does it. So the Rothschild Rockefeller banks, if they offered time accounts beside their other ones, I'd forgive and forget and get on with heaven. So, and embracing a worldwide community currency would enable us to take full advantage of that potential, I wrote. So he says, the euro involves only a limited break with the territorial principle. Its logic is that of a central bank monopoly with an expanded te territory. There are other democratic possibilities. We can make our own money rather than pay for the privilege of receiving it from our rulers. Ah, but of course everybody's going to go, shift A, inflation, more money causes inflation. Remember, my first economic verse, though, was why represent our collateral with dirt chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? So, Europeans may not yet be reduced to desperate measures of the Argentinians. I know, 
they have to be broken the streets to switch to the stable lifeboats. But remember, as soon as the stable lifeboats get big enough, the unstable loan shark ships come along and everybody jumps back into the trap, right? Stupid humanity. So, uh, they may not re reduce to the desperation of the Argentinians, but we too have some way to go before we can afford to rest content with the money forms at our disposal. So, I said embracing community currencies is the answer, but people can never get it organized until they're pushed to the edge of starvation. So, Keith Hart is the author of Money in an Unequal World.